How you doing well? Oh man, we're at the last lesson here. It looks like before the review video, the review for the test. So here we go, man. Problem solving. By the way, those are my two favorite words in math. Yes, yeah, because it's all about problem solving, taking a real world problem, right? And solving it. That's what makes the joy of doing math. Let's look at our topic. Of course, it says problem solving, comparison problems with addition and subtraction. Okay, so this is basically kind of the topic here. We're going to be looking at addition and subtraction in how it relates to problem solving. But we do have our essential question, and our essential question, our purpose, yeah, this is why we live. I mean, well, no, this is why we do math, because this is what's going to drive this lesson. It says, how can you use the strategy, draw a diagram, to solve comparison problems with addition and subtraction. So we're going to be doing a problem where we're going to need the strategy, draw a diagram. Okay, that's in the forefront of my mind. But, of course, we need to unlock the problem. That's right, my friends, because this is real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Yes. It says here, a hot air balloon festivals draw large crowds of people. Oh, my goodness. Based on the picture. Woo. There's a lot of people there. It says the attendance on the first day of one festival was 17,350. On the second day, the attendance was, whoa, 18,925. Whoa. That's all I'm saying. Whoa. Whoa, dude. Now, how many more people attended the hot air balloon festival on the second day? He says use the graphic organizer to help you solve the problem. Well, let's take a look at that. It says, what do I need to find? Write what you need to find. Well, I need to find how many more people attended the hot air balloon festival on the second day. So let's go ahead and write that down. There we go. What information do I need to use? Well, we do know I need to use this information. 17,350 is how many people attended on the first day. On the second day, I'm going to need that which is 18,925 people attended on the second day. What strategy can you use? Well, I could, I could draw a diagram. I could draw, oops, this supposed to be a W. Sloppy. Okay, let's fix that. I could draw a diagram or use a bar model. I've done those before. Now it says solve the problem. It says I can draw a bar model and write an equation to represent the problem. Where this bar model comes into play is it's just showing this one's a little bit larger. This little section shows how much of it, okay, is more than the other, okay? Well, let's go ahead and do the standard algorithm here. If we're going to subtract, okay, we're gonna line up our digits properly to find the difference. Here, I'm gonna to need to regroup, and I'm getting an amount of 1,575. So 1,575 more people attended the festival on the second day because we subtracted. Now I could always double check. This is what I would always do on a test, you guys. And I think you should do the same. It's always worked for me. And I'm going to just add those to make sure I get back to my number. 5, 12. And it was a pretty basic problem. But you saw how I made a mistake in a previous video, how easy it is just to drop, not put down a number, whatever. You always check your work and see it worked out for me there. So I like it. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Now it's going to have us try another problem. But before, we have a special visitor. He's called the White Arrow. <laughs> it's so funny. I don't think I've ever seen these. I've done a lot of these fifth grade math. I never remember seeing this little guy. I wonder if I did something different. <laughs> but it's great to have you aboard, my friend. Anyways, this is during an event, a hot air balloon traveled a distance of 5,110 feet during the first trip and 850 feet more during the second trip. How far did it travel during the second trip? Interesting. So what they've done is they have a distance that it traveled on the first trip and then it gave us, it traveled 850 feet more during the second trip. All right, how far did it travel during the second trip? Now we subtracted the last time, but think about what the problem's asking us here or the, the information that it's giving us. It's not giving us the two total distances. Like in the previous problem, it was the attendance. They gave us so much attendance on the one day, so much of the attendance on the second day, how much more was it? Here, it's kind of asking the same thing, 
but subtraction is not what comes to mind. But let's go ahead and do read the problem and then we can go from there. It says, so what do I need to find? I need to find how far it traveled during the second trip. And it says, what information do I need to use? Well, obviously I'm going to need to know distance traveled for first trip. And let's just go ahead and write that down. That was 5,110. Okay. Um, I'm also going to use the 850 feet more. So I'm going to use the 850 feet more. I don't know how, like how that sounds. So I'm going to, I'm going to rephrase this. Okay. Back that one out. Okay. The balloon beyond the first trip. I'd probably say the addition. Uh, I would need the additional 850 feet that the balloon traveled beyond that first trip. Now, how I use this information, I could draw, I could draw a diagram or model. We'll put bar model. Now, the focus here in this particular lesson is to draw a diagram or bar model. But here, I almost even think writing an equation would be helpful too. I'm just going to put here, write an equation. Remember an equation is a fancy word. I forget if you guys use this word in fourth grade, but it's just a number sentence. Okay. I tend to think by fourth grade, we should just be calling it an equation, but you may still use number sentence. So now we have solved the problem. Okay. So when I look at this problem, you know, if you're doing the bar model, you know, you're seeing a, a total distance for the second trip. Okay. We don't know what that is though. We know how far, and I'm just estimating these. This was the the first trip of 5,110, I believe it was. Okay. And ultimately this is going to give us that answer here, which we already know is 850 feet. So if we take the amount for the second trip, that's what this is, the second trip, and we subtract this from, and remember this one here is the first trip, we're going to get a difference of 850 feet. I would kind of think of this as an equation or a number sentence, and I'm going to write it in two different ways. One way is just, you know, you could draw your empty box. I don't know what that is, but if I add plus, and if I add my 850, I'm sorry, actually I meant to put subtract, but okay, let's write this two different ways. So that here we can put 5110. That's going to give us the distance traveled in the second trip. What I was trying to do here is put this spot for the second trip minus, and then the 5,100. 10 feet is equal to the 850 feet. See, these are all, these are all related equations. They all mean the same. If you take this and you add it to that, that's going to give you the distance for the second trip, which is what this is here. So that's, I guess what I'm saying this problem is set up just a little bit different because we can add in helping us solve this problem. What clearly appears to be subtraction. So we're going to take our 5,000 then 110 feet. If we simply add the additional 850 feet that it traveled, now, now we'll get our total. Now we get six, nine, 5,960. And this would be for the second trip, the distance. And of course this, we could always double check. Okay. By plopping this right into our little equation here and subtract that. We take that amount subtracted by this, or we could take this subtracted by that either, either way. It gets right back. So is our answer reasonable? Explain how you know. Well, reasonableness, I guess I would look at my numbers for an estimate. If I'm looking at about 5,000, so let's go ahead and check. So it, the distance the first time was about 5,000. The second time, 850, we could say that's about 900. There we go. 50, 900. Sure very reasonable. 5960. So my answer is reasonable. So now that I explain it, let me go ahead and write it down. Also, since addition and subtraction are inverse operations, you can subtract one from the other to check for reasonable answer too. So I'm going to write that down. Okay. There you are, my friends. Woohoo. Hey, how about that? Another video down. This finishes chapter one. Please look for the review videos. I typically do three review videos for each chapter. In the Go Math program, at least in fifth grade, you have six pages of review pages. Some teachers actually use this for the test, but uh, most teachers probably use the actual standard math test provided to them in the teacher's guide. 
So I do the review videos to get you ready for the test. There will be three of them, review one, two, and three. And each video will contain two of the pages. They're about the same, about 15 minutes or so. Anyway, be really helpful if you're looking to improve your math scores for the chapter test. Now, again, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to get in contact with me and 